I'm Scott McGowan. And I'm Anne Marie Singleton. Now, I think even for our listeners, too, I think what's important is um, we might be right, we might be wrong, but one thing is we're not afraid. Right. And we have a point of view, and I think that people should hear it. And we're unscripted. We just have free reign for 20 minutes. Welcome to Side Effects with an A. Welcome back to Side Effects. I'm Scott McGowan. And I'm Anne Marie Singleton. We have a good friend with us uh, today, Joe Motes. So thanks for being here. Good to be here. with you. Bro. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And uh, you, uh, you're you responsible for growing an amazing organization in Cincinnati. Uh, and uh, understanding a little bit about who you are and why you're passionate about what you do. I think one of the things that Ann and I were talking about was uh, culture is, is, is really, really important to you. Uh, and so tell us a little bit about maybe the, maybe the history of your organization. Yeah, the early beginnings. The beginnings. <laughs> well, it starts out quite humble. Um, starts out as one, me, myself, and I, you know. And, and uh, I'm a farm boy. I grew up on a farm, part of a large family in Cincinnati. And um, came back um, type A personality, full of grit and perseverance and... and uh, Thought I knew everything there was to know about business and growing turf and jumped into, um, came out of Ohio State and started the uh, the turf business. You were in agricultural studies there, right? I was. Is that right? Yeah. 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 And your first office was the home you grew up in. Yeah, it was a little humble abode. Yeah. Um, I first went to the bank and said, you know, I, I got all these great ideas and dreams and uh, quickly learned reality that those don't get funded, you know, that, that um, you've got to have, you've got to have a portfolio to, to go on. So came home with tail between the legs, honestly. So it's easier to get money when you, when you, when you, uh, have when you don't need it <laughs> right. Yeah, so, <laughs> right. than if you need it. That's kind of the way it plays. Yeah. 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 But dad, you know, he's smart like a fox, and um, he was a great business mentor. And he was like, you know, I got seven behind you, so I don't have any money either. But I've got the old house we used to live in, if you can make anything of that. So did a bit of creative chainsaw work and created uh, a drive-in where I used to have the, the living room that when I grew <laughs> up in it. So, and uh, it actually worked out pretty good. The side room, we had a fridge in there, and had cold ones in there, had an extension cord over to it, and the outhouse out back we refurbished, and that became the uh, the the office. That's awesome. Shop. Well, and where you are where you are today. So, so yeah, it's where you were, kind of and then where you are today. From. Yeah. So yeah. so your organization today. What do you what are you most proud of? Our people. Yeah, we're 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 a hundred strong now. Um, and we do some really cool kind of work. We build some awesome fields you know, around the area and around the world. But what are, what are some of the part. some of the fields that you've done that 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 our audience might be able to say, "Wow, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't you know do, that was you done." You do regular turf and natural turf. We do I mean, both synthetic, synthetic and, right. and natural. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So being farm background, you know, I love the natural turf side. But reality is that a lot of our high schools need to have constant play on them. So. We love going into high school facilities and bringing them a, a surface that they can play on all the time. But then we also love the high end of the sport. So Atlanta Braves, we just did their new um, facility. Uh, we're down um, working now with the uh, with the Dolphins in their project. We just did the Ravens a year ago and facilities closer here to the tri-state. Um, the, the Bengals, the Colts are both our facilities, uh, but I tell you where our true love is, is working with the high schools, um, working out in the rural community, because the whole community comes out for yeah. the show as you build it. Well, even on your website, so there's a, there's, a, there's just some great stories about the Moats Corporation and everything they do, and I loved, like, even even the high school coaches it's talked about, like, the students, like, running out on the field, yeah, like, yeah, wow, yeah. like, this is this is ours. Yeah, yeah everything's the, an experience, isn't it? Yeah, and the parents, you know, they grill out to, to get a, to for the team as they're building the field. So the team members love, you know, doing that kind of work. Well, you can and it's instant gratification. You know, the the group it just gets so excited to see the outcome, as does the the client that you're working with. 
Yeah, that's awesome. So you said the thing you're most proud of is the team, and obviously talking about the team and doing the work. Um, and you started with one person, you, yourself, and I, as you mentioned. So talk about how it started when you started to build the team and what, what that, when that transition point took place where you were able to maybe, your words, unpack some of the things that you were carrying and include other people in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a 42-year effort of, of trying to get through this thick head and trying to drill down and, uh, you know, those underlying things that you can just be more open, more vulnerable is, is you know, it's, it's a simple stuff, but it's the hardest things to do sometimes, uh, the most simple things in life. And so for me, you know, just being thick-skinned and I can get it done attitude, kind of persevered through through the group to where people are following direction and doing things in a certain way. And it wasn't until I just struggled. Um, while you can grow a company to a certain size, mm -hmm. managing that way, but um, it became such an internal, personal struggle of, of needing to change up the way I was leading the organization. Uh, to where I finally was like, I've got to either do something else or, or change my model because I've hit the ceiling. I'm burning night and day. And um, where I started, I just was, I'm, I'm going to hire up. I'm going to find people around me smarter than I am to, to help me with this. And Yeah, I think you said something in your talk that I heard before. Um, you went from a a command and control right. sort of environment to let me find people who who might be looking at things different than me. Yeah. Um, to take I us think to so many of level. us in small and mid-sized business, we got into it because we knew something about the widget we made or the service that we did. But it evolves as you become successful with delivering that to people. It naturally evolves to a larger and larger organization. So you, you get pulled away from that that brought you there to having to do some totally different skill set. Right. And, and so getting over that hump of doing it, just doing it my way and following suit gets you so far, but then you reach the ceiling. And so, yes, it's going from command and control to saying, how can I become the flip of that and think in a different way of supporting the leadership that really can now help scale. Well, there's only so much you can probably do by yourself. Uh, and I think you even talked about that when we met with, uh, when you spoke at all the folks at Aileron. So for our listeners, there's an amazing organization in Tip City, name it as Aileron. You can go to uh, www.aileron.org and actually um, Joe, your presentation that you, that you that you spoke to all of us about, and I was there. You did a terrific job. Mm, thank you. Is when you know, Joe, you were talking about you know building your company and being very successful and being command and control and being involved with everything. Like you, like you had an awakening, where one day it was like I, I'm not, I'm not, and maybe it was more your wife than it was <laughs> you. Yeah. But you said, you know, I'm, I'm not so sure. Um, I'm, I'm not so sure this is this is working as well as I think. Your wife probably had that opinion more than you had that opinion. <laughs> much more, yeah. Yeah, you take me way too, too much back there. But, yeah, that epiphany uh, didn't come from within. It came from outside, and she, she certainly had an influence on it. The end, a, um, a very frank doctor hit me between the eyes, you know, where I was 34 years old, can do, can get anything done. I just got to keep working harder and finding you know, you get to where well, there's only 24 hours and you got to think differently. And so I was dealing with a lot of stomach pain and it got to the point where I swore I had an ulcer. So I'm in trying to get a fix for that. Right. And the doc's like, well, I'm kind of looking at your whole person and I'm looking at your family history. And I go through this and I see that you've got a lot of other Pre, you've got some things coming up in your future that you need to deal with bigger than your stomach. So, are you take me way back? Yeah, that's hard. Take me back here, but uh, the best thing he did was, was like not put up with that. It was like, you know, you don't change something, you're going to be dead in 15 years. Yeah. Which I have family history of that. So, so it's sometimes... You know, that's what's so hard about being proactive about ourselves is sometimes it takes a moment of pretty... Yeah. Right between the eyes. 
Thanks for the honesty on that too. Yeah. I think, you know, one of the things a lot of us as leaders, you know, we think that the whole world depends on us. And the fact of the matter is, if, um, if, uh, if we're not around, um, there's nobody to lean on. Yeah. And we've got to, we've got to understand that, uh, it's not all about, it's not all about business. Yeah. It's um, so well said. It's yeah. Good. Um, I think, uh, yeah, we as, we, we as leaders feel like we need to carry it all on our shoulders. And that's where, that's where it works against you when you're dealing with um, both learning how to lead in a different manner as well as being proactive about your, your health and your organization's health. You right. know? And it starts from the top. So for me, it had to start really the hard way, getting smacked. Yeah. And um, then you, it started with slow, incremental steps. Yeah, you of were able change. to combine your health journey with mm -hmm. your leadership journey, which is pretty cool. So yeah. talk about how you how you started down that down that path of taking that doctor's advice after you you know had to soak in that for a minute or two. What you decided to to do? Yeah, it, um, I in. I, I love, I'm very competitive, and we've got a competitive organization, so I gamified it with, with looking for something I could do each year, something I could do without, and, and announced to other people that, you know, I'm going to be a hold accountable to doing without something. And then realizing kind of the, the good that came from that and then spreading that into the organization and that we can do without the pop vending machines. Let's go with something healthier right. and continuing down that path continues to start getting everybody to look at what can we replace what we were doing in one way with something in a in a better fashion. Yeah. And I think you talked about giving up soda and you had your wife as support. She gave it up with right. you. It was supposed to be a month, turned into a year. Um, but Never replacing that since. 30 some years, yeah, but replacing 30, that with um, with running. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, I'm gonna give this up, but I'm gonna add this in, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, no ice cream. So a fun <clears throat> fact about our CEO for people who have been watching this, they know Scott loves ice cream. Loves ice cream. I love it. Never more. met an ice cream he didn't <laughs> didn't love. Yes, and you love ice cream. Oh, so yeah. he gave ice cream up for a year. Yeah. So is it a? <clears throat> can I? Am I? Would I ruin I your life I if smart. I threw that challenge out to you? Yeah. But I've, I've gotten better. Yeah, I've no, gotten better. Right. I know. You don't eat it but, every day. Uh, but, but that's a, an amazing Again, yeah, I have to, to do, do everything pretty tough away. And for me, I have to, like, really mindfully set something aside that I normally as a go-to, mm -hmm. just automatically, like, at, in the evening with ice cream. And... Um, Doing that, then I've just become, on a whole lot of levels, a lot more aware of things that we could do without. It's just right? the intentionality. Yeah. And I think the, the whole premise of, uh, of everything that you talked about was around unpacking your current life, which, which, which I really um, respected and appreciate. And w what I liked about what you talked about was, so I unpacked soda. Mm -hmm. I unpacked it. And for a lot of us in building a habit, we've got, to, we've got to fill that with something else. Otherwise, there's a good fighting chance that that's going to show back up again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. said, pop's coming out and something's coming back in. Mm -hmm. And that was running. And that led to, um, uh, even, even led to a triathlon. So mm -hmm. it, it went from, because you know, do it the hard I have way. a very <laughs> addictive personality. <laughs> So if I pull one thing off the truck yeah, right. and I don't replace it with another one, and by golly, by the grace of God, we can pull good habits off and put good habits back on. That's yeah. if we're lucky. Yeah, right. that's right. That's if we're lucky. And a lot of it is luck. It is. It is. And it's also what you make of it. Well, I think, yeah. I think also what you talk about a lot, because you're willing to be vulnerable, a lot of it is just being honest with yourself. Right. Yeah. So it's just the truth in our lives. What, what needs to come off that truck? And, and I'm smart enough, or you're smart enough to say, by golly, I better put something back on there. One of the things you talked about, and I love this story, is that you started traveling for like weeks at a time. You took some, some time off mm -hmm. to kind of be by yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a different kind of traveling. Mm -hmm. I guess you could term it that. It's pack, backpacking. Yeah. So putting everything that you you need for a couple of weeks on your back is a real teacher. You know, it's one trick is a smart start with a really small ruck because we tend to pack a lot in life and we pack for our fears. Right. And so having to whittle that down to just what you can put on your back is a real teaching experience. By the way, you what what you just said. We pack for our fears. I think if there's anything that I heard that day, 
it's probably the number one thing that I heard mm -hmm. in regards for, for a lot of us is um, we're, we're, we're just so afraid, but we're not willing to be vulnerable enough to talk about what we're afraid of. And it leads to everything oh. we're talking about in leadership and uh, working together with people, um, being mindful of not necessarily your way being the right, you know, we put on all this armor. Control right. is a fear. Yeah. yeah. Arrogance is a fear, yeah. right? Self-centeredness is a fear. Yeah. There, the, it's all fear-based. Yeah. And it leads to so much oh. complication. Well, and you know, this is a really, really basic example of, of packing in, in its truest sense with a little kid. So I have, most people know I have kids. I have twins. They're 17. They're juniors oh, cool. in high school now. My daughter's backpack, when she was in maybe the fifth grade, I picked it up. And I was like, what on earth? So I weighed it on the scale. Yeah. It was like 30 Amazing. pounds. Yeah. <laughs> I said, Zoe, what do you have in this backpack? She said, well, Mommy, I have everything in there because I'm afraid I might forget something. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, just look at the end of the day at what you need and bring home what you need. You don't need every book. But what if I don't remember? So she learned that habit as a little kid on her own of cool. I must take everything with me. And I've been working really hard to break that. Like, let's be a little more prepared up front. If you just take 10 minutes, then you just bring one or two books home, not eight books. So I have this little kid carrying this 30 pound backpack because she was afraid that she was gonna miss something. And I think example. that just that tiny example, I mean, it mushrooms into something huge. The and older we our, get and the more responsibilities we get. And to our homes and to our businesses, it, it starts to exhibit itself all around the, the things that we put on around. And to, to cover up what you're saying, Scott, that, oh, well, I don't wanna show my vulnerability. Yeah. One of the things, stuff. too, that you talked about is, hey, when we get that out there on a trail and it's CEOs and yeah. could be, you know, could be a janitor, could be, you know, um, just a variety of different people. Oh, yeah. um, All and, walks alike. And I, and I love what you said is, <laughs> is uh, the longer we're out there the more the same we are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you all look the same, you all smell the same, mm -hmm. and not too much time. And You know, there's no locks, and people have each other's back, like, unbelievably. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a real tribal kind of feeling because you've all got the same, you got clarity on the goal, and you're trying to get from point A to point B. In my case, we're hiking the Appalachian Trail in segments, and it's, you know, it's a real teacher to business because it's coming back and are we getting too complicated or there isn't clarity and do we have too much security built around things and do people feel like we have their back as we go beyond 100 and, you know, similar to the way that they were felt when we were half a dozen. A small you know, team, so. yeah. Well, and I think one of the things that you talked about too, and I, and I probably believe this is true, is the things that you pack for on that trip that if you didn't, didn't pack it. There's somebody there that probably has it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. 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 People cover for each other. Oh, big it's time. amazing what you'll give up out there. Yeah. To to help a stranger right. because you're both like in this effort together, and so there's so many teachers to business because oh. it's coming back and mm -hmm. saying, "Did we have that same kind of culture here? That same kind of feeling? Yeah. Is it that tribal where we got rituals that, man, we are." Definitely, we do. This is us, and other people might think we're quirky, but yeah. it's us. You have another trip coming up? Is it? I do. Yeah. 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 So, this is a big year for me. So I'm. You'll know that I announce it. All right. <laughs> I, you can. Yeah. So yeah. So I turned 65 this year. Okay. And um, I just I'm looking to do a sabbatical and do something both to both to set show opportunity and, and have others in the company not take as long as it's taken me to to get to that point of offering a sabbatical as far as the organization. So we're discussing having it be part of our process earlier on mm -hmm. so people can recharge. But again, I'm a bit of a slow learner, so it's taken me a bit. Well, yeah. But, yeah. <clears throat> but I'm looking at uh, yeah, that doing an extended effort. That's awesome. Well, good for you. Well, one of the things that uh, we began to talk a little bit about was, um, <clears throat> so you're um, you're the CEO of, of an amazing organization, uh, and then you had you had like a health wake up call, right? You yeah. had a you had a you had a uh, a, uh, a wife that loves you, mm -hmm. that said, "Hey, I think we need to do something about this." 
uh, and then you had a wake up call. And by the grace of God, you had a really good doctor. Yeah. Right. You know, a doctor that just said, hey, I'm not going to give you the, because you wanted the prescription. Oh, I just wanted to That's fix it. and get out of right. here. Give me something. I'm going to CVS and I'm, I'm right. done. Right. Um, but wh why do you think, as, as you look at your own workforce and you see people out there, and, and you know who they are, mm -hmm. right? Is like, wh what's it gonna, what's it gonna take? Yeah, it's some of our best performers. Mm -hmm. It's the can-do attitude, and the, you know, I'll figure out a way to get it done. So yeah, from a health care, unfortunately, we we often react to to a crisis or a problem, where it's trying to change that mindset as to how we can be, you know, more loving, more caring about each other and how in a company you can have an environment where we're, we're looking out for what people are, the direction they're headed because I think what it, I think it helps, years help and hard knocks mm -hmm. help. So a person in my position, you're able to speak if you're willing to be vulnerable to, you know, going potentially down the wrong track and what can happen. Right. And how we could, we, we're we putting a system in place to allow you to be more pro-advocates. Mm -hmm. It's part of, of your, your culture, <clears throat> yeah. to care about the health of your workforce. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. It's a big deal. Yeah, it's a hard thing to wake people up to. Our yeah. bodies are super sophisticated. Oh, yeah. Compensate uh, it, for a lot. Oh, a they'll lot. put up with. I mean, you, you can imagine. If, do you still have the first truck you had? I don't. I yeah. wish I did. <laughs> but I mean, you can imagine. I mean, if we treated our bodies right, our our vehicles the way we treated our oh, bodies, I mean, we, we wouldn't we wouldn't go anywhere. That's why I don't have it. It'd be long. You're exactly since right. Worn out. You're but, exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So, well, a couple things. One is, if you're interested in hearing more about um, Joe's story, go to aileron.org. Uh, and and you can pull that up. It's, I think it's under the 2018 summit. Right. You know, look at that. Finding and, the joy in unpacking. Right. Yeah, listen to that story um, because I think it's in your vulnerability that uh, at least hopefully will awaken the eyes of uh, of people. I heard a great quote by uh, Abraham Lincoln that said, um, and and I don't like it said it said most men, but I'm going to turn it around. So this is what 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 Lincoln said. But most people. Most people can overcome adversity, but, but to test a person's character, give them power. Mm. Yeah. And so I, what I think is in power is a lot of that is in control. Mm -hmm. When we want so much control or we give so much power over fear, mm -hmm. um, it'll, it'll torque our character. It can be consuming. It'll just absolutely uh, torque it. So your vulnerability, um, your passion for your workforce is unprecedented. Uh, super grateful for you being here. Yeah, and, and thanks uh, for sharing your personal story with us. Thank we you for that. taking me there again. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks. and thanks for uh, thanks for caring about people because it's that's that's what it's about. That's by what God. It's all about. Yeah. So yeah. join us next time on on side effects. If you want to email us, you can email us at um, www.healthyourbirthdays.com. Or and at healthyourbirthdays.com. And join us next time. Have a great day. Thanks. Thanks for listening and opening your mind. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach us at scott at healthierbirthdays.com. Or Ann at healthierbirthdays.com. We hope you'll join us next time on, on Side, Side Effects. Effects.